So in this video, I'm just going to show you guys how I cut up my meshes and create a, a front and a back piece. So whenever I open up ZBrush, uh, you you start with this red kind of clay look, and I don't really like that red clay look, so I always switch it over to the matte cap gray. It's just easier on the eyes, and you can actually see like the contours of your model better. So that, that's what I always do when I whenever I start using ZBrush. Um, with you, you can actually set it so that it opens up in a different matte cap. But uh, in this, in my case, I just haven't gone around doing that. So there's a number of ways you can actually cut up your meshes. There's a when you when you're working with 3D or just sculpting, digital sculpting 3D or what have you. There's always you know maybe ten or so different ways you can do one thing. So for me, they're not these ways that I'm sure I'm going to show you guys. It's probably not maybe not the best way, but it's the way that I am most comfortable with, and it's the way that I usually use to cut up my meshes. So first of all, I make sure that my mesh is nice and uniform. So I, I run a, a Dyna mesh to make it just one poly group and um, just ensure that, you know, it's, it's a clean kind of mesh, not so much clean, to, not so much clean topology, but it's just one unified mesh with no like random intersecting geometry, no like, no, uh, you know, uh, parts that stick out. So what I usually do is run that data mesh, make sure that the, the, the mesh is clean. And then I use this tool right here, which is called the knife tool. And this tool is good, but it also has its limitations. So as you can see, I'm cutting up, it, cut, it basically cuts up your mesh, like basically like a knife through butter. So you can cut it and what it does, it will fill out the, fill the cross section out. So as you can see, when I make it the cut, it, it fills in this, the cross section with a poly group. So the limitation to this, even though it's very useful, is that it doesn't retain what you cut out. So for example, if I make a cut like this, it won't retain the back piece, which is not what we want. But I'm just using, in this example, I'm just showing you a really quick and easy way to just cut up a mesh if you want. Um, so I know that in Bamboo Slice or some other slicing programs, and also mix, mix, sorry, Mesh Mixer, you can easily cut the mesh up like this as well. But this is just how you would do it or how I would do it in ZBrush. It's basically, it's basically just using the knife tool and just cutting. But as I said, the limitations are you can't retain what you cut on the other side. So not exactly what we want. But as you saw before, it's really good for cutting up details like um, you know, sci-fi details, like cutting corners and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this is for this method right, that I'm using right now, instead of using the knife tool, I'm using the slice curve tool, which as you can see, it, it doesn't exactly cut up your mesh, but it creates a new poly group. So wherever you make that slice, it'll cut up a second poly group. As you can see, this mesh now has the front poly group and the back poly group. The only thing is that it, where, where you made the cut, it didn't fill in that intersect, it didn't fill in that cross section, which is a problem, which I will show you guys how to fix. <clears throat> so right now there's that front piece, which is red, back piece, is, which is purple, two different polygroups, which is great, which is what we want. And now we need to split these, split these up into different sub tools. So if you go to split and uh, split subtool, then these the back piece and the front piece now will be in two different subtools, just to keep it nice and tidy. And now to fill in this cross section, what you do is just run another Dynamesh. And when you run another Dynamesh, as you can see, it fills in that cross section area. So just do the same for the, the back piece as well. So switching to the back piece subtool, run a Dynamesh and it fills in that cross section. So now you have two, pretty much two uh, front and back pieces that line up perfectly together. And all you would need to do from here is basically just create, well, you can print it like this as is, but I find it better to put some keys in there so that when you print it out, you can line the back piece and the front piece nicely together. Um, I'll, we'll make another video about that, about making these uh, those key pieces. Um, you can make a very simple key piece that just lines them up, or you can make, what I like to make is two key pieces that actually click in 
uh, from t- into one another. So the key piece is there's a key piece that sticks out from the back and then it clicks into the front. But that will be in another video, in maybe the next video. So using this method, the slice curve method is also does have its limitations as well. It's very good for doing just basic cuts, like from, you know, up from a, a very good for doing just straight vertical cuts. But when you want to do some more intricate kind of uh, part separation, it can get a bit um, problematic. So as you'll see now, in this example, I get, I didn't really do a very good job in showing it, but um, you might have to look closely, but I'll show you like if you, right now, if I'm, I'm making a, a slice with two corners, with two turns in it, so instead of a straight cut, it has basically like a, a 20 degree turn or two 20 degree turns. Um, and the thing with this is when you make a corner, when you make like a, a turn in your slice and then you try to run a dynamesh like we did before, uh, it's it'll, it's a little bit hard to see, but in that cross section, you see how where the corners are, the, they're filled in with a slight kind of divot, just like I'm pointing out now. That's that's that would is very problematic because you don't want that because when you print it out, it, those corner bits will be very thin. So it's kind of hard to see because this model that I've got right now is quite faceted. It's quite low poly, but when you have a high poly model and you do the same cut, you'll really you really notice that divot that goes inward in the cross section area, and that's not what we want. We want that to be a nice sharp corner. So as you can see, I'll, I'll run a dynamesh on this one as well, and you'll probably. It might be a little hard to see, but you still will see that tiny little divot in that in that section there. See where it turns, that the cross section that it filled in, it became kind of smoothed out, and that's not what we want. We want a nice sharp edge on there. So again, when doing these, when using the slice curved brush or slice slice curve tool. It's great for doing straight cuts, but if you want to do anything more intricate, it can get a little bit uh, tedious. Oh, not tedious, but it can get a little bit problematic. So this is the method that I'll show you now to actually um, remedy that, that um, divot situation. So what you do is you perform your straight cuts where you want that first corner, where you want that first turn to be. So see how right now I've made the slice exactly where that where the first turn is. Now, instead of splitting it into a sub tool, into a different sub tool, I go into my Dynamesh um, properties or go into my Dyn Dynamesh drop down menu and I turn on groups. So if you just saw this before, I have groups turned on. And what that will do is when I run a Dynamesh now, it will recognize that these are two different groups and it will separate and it will Dynamesh them as if there were two different sub tools. So as you can see now, or just then as I Dynameshed, it filled in the cross sections of both those uh, both those polygroups, and I didn't need to um, split them up into different subtools. And so again, right here, I'm using that slice curve brush again, but I'm just slicing it where it where I want those turns, and then I group the polygroups that I want. And then again, run another, another Dynamesh with groups turned on. And so as you can see, it made. It recognized that there were two different sub, uh, two different polygroups, and it filled in those cross section holes. Now, again, with the slice curve, slice curve uh, tool, you want to slice it where that turn is, and then group your polygroups to what you want. So this is the back piece, and then I set this as polygroup, so group visible, and now so now we've got two different polygroups, and we run a Dynamesh. Now make sure that Tana Bursch, you have groups turned on and then it will recognize that there's two separate groups. It will fill in the cross section area and now you have this nice crisp, um, nice crisp edge exactly where we want, where we want uh, that, that turn to be. And from here you have, um, you have a two, you have a front piece and a back piece with a little bit more of an interesting, um, cut to it, it's not just straight down the line. So usually when I do these cuts, 
I I look at the design of the helmet and then I, obviously you cut it where you want there to be, where, where it makes sense really. So you kind of follow the design and make your cuts that way. Now for this last method I'll show you, this is the method that I use uh, most, which is the shadow box method. Method. So what you do is you append uh, just a random subtool right here. I just appended a, uh, a square to my project, uh, sorry, a square, a cube to my project. So, yep, as you can see, I'm on, I'm, I'm on the cube right now and basically just position it to some a place that makes sense, like central. And then you, you turn on shadow box. So open up the shadow box menu and you just turn on shadow box. Make it so that it's kind of, it kind of uh, encapsulates your 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 helmet or your your mesh. Yep. So I'm just making it bigger so it kind of just wraps around the mesh a bit better. And then with the shadow box turned on, all you need to do is just draw out a your a mask. And then as you can see, right now I'm turning on tra uh, transparency because obviously you want to see where you're painting the mask and make sure you turn off ghost just to see the the helmet better or your mesh better and now you just want to draw i've got polygroups turned on which is a, which is a bit annoying so turn up so turning off polygroups so you don't have to see the colors now you use you know your masking brush yep and with your mask brush you just mask out where you want that uh where you want to make your cuts as you can see, you just just using the the mask lasso and just mask out the area that you want, basically what you where you want the back piece to be. So that's the back piece. Now in this situation, you don't it's a it's a bit as you can see it's a bit low res my mask, but it doesn't really matter because you can clean that up afterwards. So. From the top from the top view you want it yeah just you don't really need to do the top and the front views you can you really, you really only really need to do the side view because we're basically performing a boolean operation so you only really, really need to do this view but i just just for just to show you guys you can also do the top and the front as well but in this particular case all we really need is that this side view once you're happy with that you turn off shadow box and as you can see it creates a mesh out of it and what this mesh will do is basically create a boolean of the helmet. So in this particular case, wherever that shadow box mesh that we just created, wherever it intersects with the helmet, it'll basically just chop away. So it'll yeah, it'll basically just delete whatever whatever uh, polys are intersecting that um that boolean mesh that we made so right now i'm just cleaning it up a little bit with the knife tool so just making those sharp sharp corners sharp edges just cleaning it up a little bit and as you'll see soon you can also clean it up while you have uh, live boolean turned on so if you actually want to see the result of of the boolean working and and cutting away at the the helmet mesh yeah you just need to turn on live boolean which i'll show you in a sec and the beauty of live boolean is that you can actually keep working on your boolean mesh while you see the results of what it's doing so as you can see if you turn off this button here the one in the middle and then turn on live boolean which you'll see in this one sec so turning on live boolean and turning off the transparency and there you have it that's basically the result of the boolean but it's not it's live boolean so it's not actually it's not actually hasn't actually created the mesh yet it's just a preview of what it will look like when you actually run a boolean so right now the beauty of this is that i can actually still work on that boolean mesh while i see the results of it so just cleaning that up a bit uh, with the knife tool the move tool Yeah, you got some, I got a little bit of weird wonky area in the corner. So just using the knife tool and just cutting it out.
and then clicking that middle button again and then seeing what the results will be. So I, I didn't really do this as perfectly as I usually do it because it's really just pre for, for preview sake. Um, but yeah, I usually spend a bit more time just cleaning up this Boolean mesh a little bit better before I actually run that Boolean operation. Um, and in this case here, I can see that it's not symmetrical. So I run a mirror and weld. I'm on, I run a mirror and weld on both the helmet mesh and the Boolean mesh since they're basically uh, symmetrical, just to make sure that you know both sides are symmetrical. And then once you're happy with the the results you click make boolean mesh and then at the top of your project you'll see that it created a new z a, a new tool called umesh and whatever your your the name of your um your file is so in my case uh umesh red hood so as you can see it created a mesh that is nicely booleaned the cross sections are filled in it's created new polygroups in those cross sections and now you switch back to your old tool and then the beauty of the boolean is that you can actually instead of cutting instead of cutting away the where the where the boolean mesh was now it's um, keeping where the boolean mesh was so instead of it's basically doing the opposite so wherever the boolean mesh intersects it will now keep so if you so if i click right now i'm on the boolean mesh sub tool see if i click that third button that's basically the intersection so it'll keep wherever the mesh is intersecting with that helmet mesh. And the beauty of this is that it creates basically, it creates the back piece and it'll fit exactly where the front piece um, will, it will line up exactly with the front piece because it's using the same Boolean mesh. But instead this time you're only just um, keeping the intersection instead of keeping the difference. So that lines up pretty much perfectly. And so you've got this is the beauty of this is that you can make your Boolean mesh as complicated and as complex as you want. Um, you can make, you know, you can make uh, your cut to be like a zigzag and it'll still line up perfectly with the front and back. Um, so this method is my favorite method. It's a bit, it takes a little bit longer than doing, you know, your straight cuts, obviously. But um, for me, I feel like it, it just does a, a great job of, um, separating the front to the back and then you can make it as intricate as you want and um and so that was the three ways that i usually create my cuts uh these days i'm basically only use the boolean method because it's still it's my favorite and i feel like it's the most foolproof um and yeah that's pretty much it i hope you guys learned something from this um, if you want to see more of these videos please like and subscribe and if you're feeling generous please check out my patreon uh, i've just started it and i hope that you guys can support me all the links will be in the description below. So thanks and I'll see you in the next one.